To record a melting point, first a sample is loaded into a melting point tube. A small portion of the dry solid is ground into a powder using a spatula or stirring rod. A tiny amount of this powder is scooped into the open end of the tube and is moved down to the closed end of the tube with gentle tapping. The goal is to have just about two millimeters of tightly packed solid in the melting point tube. The melting point tube is placed into the melting point apparatus and the sample is slowly heated at a rate of one to two degrees per minute. While heating, keep a close eye on both the temperature and the crystals which are viewed through a magnifying glass. When a compound's melting point is known, one can save time by quickly heating the sample until the temperature is within about 20 degrees of the expected melting point. At the first sign of melting within the packed solid, record the temperature. The crystals may shrink or shift a bit. This is called sintering and should be ignored. Instead, watch for when the bulk of the crystals begins to look a little wet and record that temperature. This will be the first number of the reported range. When the last crystal disappears, leaving only a clear liquid, record that temperature as well. This is the second number of the reported range. Be careful not to confuse a speck of dirt or filter paper for crystals, or you will overshoot the upper temperature of the melting point range. The melting point tube should be handled as glass waste and should be discarded properly. Melting point tubes cannot be reused. If you are dealing with an unknown and you have no idea what its melting point will be, you can save time by first heating a sample quickly and measuring an approximate melting point. Once you have a rough estimate of the unknown's melting point, a more precise measurement can be made on a fresh sample with slower heating.